Psalm 118, and verses 23 through 26. And have us say glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And this is the word of the Lord. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of God. And if you will, turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 19. Luke, chapter 19. Amen. And we want to read verses 36 through 38. Amen. Luke chapter 19 and verses 36 through 38. Amen. And those scriptures read as follows. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. From these scriptures uh, that the Lord has led us to on this day, Thank you. you remember in Palm Sunday and what Jesus has done for us, Amen. He did for us. Uh, we want to speak to you from this subject. Here comes the answer to our prayer. Amen. Here comes the answer to our prayer. Amen. As we celebrate and commemorate this day, uh, which is designated and tagged as Palm Sunday, uh, we celebrate and commemorate the day that was made and appointed by the Lord God. We know it is the day that was made and appointed by God, and we know it is the day to celebrate and commemorate because Psalms 118, 24 says this. It said, This is the day which the Lord had made. We will rejoice. And be glad in it. Amen. As Pastor Turquie and Deacon Young said, every day that Lord the Lord allows us to see Amen. is another day that He has made. Amen. And it's a day that we should rejoice because it's a day that He has made and He has given for us. Yes. And not only has He made the day and given the day for us, it's a day designed for us to succeed and fulfill His will. Amen. And for Him to fulfill His will in our life. Thank you, Jesus. Although we have this knowledge, we have a desire to better understand Palm Sunday. For God had a fourfold purpose for preparing and providing Palm Sunday. Uh, we have to understand that everything that He says, it is a day that the Lord has made. Every day that He makes has a specific purpose. Amen. And everything that God does is in accordance with fulfillment of His plan. Yes. And our purpose number one was to adhere to His plan. Uh, we know Palm Sunday is part of God's master plan because in Psalm 118 and 23 it says, This is the Lord's doing, Amen. and it is marvelous in His eyes. Yes, the reason why Jesus came the day that He came to Jerusalem, because it was God's doing. God had already designed that day to happen from the beginning of time. Amen. From the day that Adam and Eve had been put out of the garden, and God made the promise to bring them back, that plan was in place. We also know that Palm Sunday is a frontal view of God's redemptive blueprint and a New Testament revelation that he was standing by because Jeremiah 29 and 11 says this, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace 
and not of evil to give you an expected end. Yeah. Jesus made his arrival in Jerusalem so that we could have an opportunity, as the old folks say, back at the tree of life. Amen. And coming to Jerusalem, Jesus was sticking to the Psalm 47 and 8 provision of God's plan, which said this. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is written in my heart. Amen. Jesus came to Jerusalem knowing what the end for him would be. He came there knowing that one day those people would praise him, and a few days later they would crucify him. Knowing that in his heart and in his mind, that had to be a difficult thing, knowing that you're coming to a people who are not showing appreciation for what you were doing. And still in the midst of it, Jesus had it in his heart and in his mind to go forward with God's plan. Purpose number two was to affirm God's promise. Jesus coming to Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday was a confirmation of Numbers 23 and 19 which said this, God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. Now the son of man that he should repent. He has said, and shall not he do it? He has spoken, and shall not he make it good? If God has said it, that settles it. Whatever God has spoken will come to pass. God's word will not return and void to him. You can guarantee if God tells you he's going to move, he will move. If God says he's going to stop it, Stop it. Amen. The coming of Jesus Christ to Jerusalem upheld the pen promise in Jeremiah 33, 14 and 16, where the word says this, The day will come, says the Lord, when I will do for Israel and Judah all the good things I have promised them. Amen. In those days and at that time, I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. And in that day, Judah will be saved. And Jerusalem will live in safety. And this will be his name. The Lord is our righteousness. Amen. One of the names and one of the descriptions that are given for Jesus, we say he's Jehovah Jireh, he's Jehovah Nisi, but to say that he is the Lord of our righteousness means he's Jehovah Kniskinu, which means he is righteousness. So see, we find the one that is coming, who is the righteous branch, who is coming back to give us the opportunity to share in the righteousness of God. Amen. Purpose number three was to actuate God's prophecy on that Palm Sunday. God put into action his Zechariah 9 and 9 prophetic vision regarding our potentate Jesus Christ. That prophetic vision declared this, Rejoice, O people of Zion! Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem! Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious. Yet he is humble, riding on a donkey. Riding on a donkey's coat. And so, this day that Jesus comes into Jerusalem is just not a coincidental situation. It's a day that God has already planned, that he has appointed, that not only would Jesus come into Jerusalem on that day, but he would come into Jerusalem riding a donkey into the city. Amen. Everything that God had for that day was prepared. Yes, sir. Jesus coming at the time that he came was prepared. The donkey that he was supposed to ride in on was prepared. How do we know it was prepared? Because the scripture says, Jesus sent the disciples into the city, and he said, go into the city, and you will find a coat tied in the city. When they ask you, why do you loosen the coat? Tell them, the Lord has need of him. And when you say that the Lord has need of him, they are going to give the coat into your possession for you to bring him to me. Now notice this coat was a young coat on which no one had written before. That's right. No man had written on this coat. Oh, no. Now you have to understand when you're dealing with coats, when you're dealing with donkeys or horses or anything in that sense, when that animal has not been written by a man, he's going to put up some resistance of being written. That's right. You try to get on any horse, on any donkey, on any mule that has not been written by a man, he will throw you off. That's right. Try to get on him. Try to put a saddle on that animal. He will throw you off. That's right. But in this instance, it said they brought the Jesus. They threw their garments on his back and Jesus mounted the coat. The coat didn't argue. 
the coat didn't bump. The coat didn't try to throw him off. The coat went straight up to Jerusalem with Jesus riding on him. Notice it doesn't say anything about Jesus getting on the coat and saying, Get me up. He didn't say, Come on, move on. He got on the coat. And the coat just started walking up to the roof. That tells us that that coat knew he had a plan. Yes. That coat knew who the one was going to ride and who he would be. And he was not going to allow anyone else but Jesus to ride upon him. Yes, Lord. That coat was prepared for that day. Yes. Yes. God had assigned that coat for that day. Yes. And so when he went into the city, that coat was waiting for the command to be loose to do God's will. Sure Amen. Yes, sir. On that Palm Sunday, God stimulated the crowd to erupt into preordained praise yes, by shouting, Hosanna. Now, we have to understand this. By doing so, they fulfilled the prescriptive prophetic script in Psalm 118 and 25. Yes, I know. For Hosanna translated means this. Help save now. And when we look at Psalm 118 and 25, it talks about that they say, Save now, I beseech thee. Save now, I beseech ye, is the Hebrew version of the Greek word, Hosanna. And so, not even realizing it, the crowd was just following the script that God had already written before the beginning of time. God had already prepared the script. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And the way he set it up, when God decided to put his people in place, he put the words in their spirit, and they started the word, Hosanna. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. When doing this, the Bible tells us, the crowd surround sound shouting from the streets and temple fulfilled Psalm 118 and 26. Notice what verse 26 says. It says, Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Amen. When you go to Luke 19, the very word that the people say is, Hosanna, blessed be he that comes in the name of the Lord. And where did it say they blessed him? It said they blessed him out of the house of God. And so the people on the streets, the people in the temple were all yelling and shouting the very word that God had scripted before Jesus was even born. And so, you can't say that this thing was just coincidence. Because everything had been laid out, line by line, paragraph by paragraph, script by script, by God. Amen. To make sure he was going to do what he promised Adam and Eve and man he would do. Yes, no. Finally, purpose number four. That God prepared and provided that Palm Sunday was to answer prayer. Yes. Amen. If there's one thing God surely will do, He will always answer prayer. Yes, He did. If you call to God and make a plea to God, God will always give a response. Yes. Amen. God will never hang up on you. God will not say He didn't hear you. God will always give an answer to your prayer. Yes, sir. Sometimes people say, well, God didn't answer my prayer. God answers every prayer. Yeah. It's just like you ask somebody a question. The answer could be yes, it could be no, it could be maybe, or as our prayer would tell us sometimes, not right now. Uh, no. But in every instance, God answers our prayer. Yes, the Psalm 118.25 passage states this, which says, Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. That is a prayer from the people asking God to come, and not only come, but to move mightily. Amen. Notice, don't just come, but when you come, don't just show up, show up. Yes. Whenever God comes, whenever God moves, there will be some shaking and there will be some quaking. Amen. Whenever God shows up, right. whenever God does something, there will be a move that you will not forget. Amen. You can try to sit still, you can try to be quiet, but when God moves in your life, you're going to move one way or the other. Amen. Either your, your, your lips going to move, yeah. your hands going to move, yeah. your feet going to move, yeah. your body going to move, yeah. your eyes will move and generate tears, yeah. but there's one way or another, there will be a move. Yeah. 
somebody got up and shouted? Yeah. How do you know God showed up? Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. How do you know God showed up? Somebody will say, glory, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Uh, what you say, Nathan? When he talked to you on one night, that was a boom. Yeah. And what you see what happened? The ship started. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> When God comes, yeah. and you know He's in the house, yeah. it doesn't matter when He's in this building or He's in your body. When God comes, yeah. you will move. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, sure. When you pray, and the old folks say, you pray right, yeah. God will move in your life. Yes, He will. Yes, we know that this statement in this, this verse is a prayer. Yeah. Because that word beseech in Hebrew means this. Yeah. Beseech means pray. Yeah. And so anytime you see the people say, Lord, I beseech thee, O Lord. They say, I'm praying to you, God. I'm asking, I'm begging, I'm pleading, I'm calling on you, Lord. Yeah. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Hmm? Come, Lord. Come. How do we know God has his prayer when the thief on the cross said, Lord,
And not only that, this is what happened. All this because we were profitable. Know what that means? Because we were fruitful. Because we called upon His name. Because we gave Him the glory. Because we worshipped Him no matter what the situation was. Because we knew that He was always there and would always be there for us. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, what you're doing is profitable. Thank you. It's being fruitful to God. It's producing. You can't have a garden if you don't plant seeds. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I know. And when you plant the seed, you can't just throw it in the ground. No, no. You got to work the ground. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it is? But Reverend Joe Paul, you to say God has given you the seed, and you got the seed. Use what you got. Yeah, right. You can't just plant it. You got to work the ground. And when you work the ground, you keep the weeds out of your God. Yeah. You throw the weeds out of the God. And when you plant your seed, yeah. and when your seed grows, yeah. and your seed produces, God blesses you to eat from your from your God. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't eat what you don't plant. If you don't put it in there, don't expect to get it out. Yeah. Oh, no. So as we leave you today, Thank you, Jesus. because of God's plan, because of God's promise, because of God's prophecy, because God answered our prayer. Yeah. Jesus came down, but then he went up. Yeah. Hmm? He came down, but then he went up. Yeah. Amen. But the thing is, he came down. To teach us that we had to bow down so that we could get up yeah. to where he is. Yeah. Yeah. The late Andre Crouch penned lyrics that express the sacred sentiment of Jesus Christ being the answer to our prayer. Amen. The lyrics of that song say this The opening curse conveys Jesus is the answer yeah. Yeah. for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Yeah. Verse 1 says, If you have some questions in the corners of your mind, traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find, yeah. reflections of your past seem to face you every day. But there's one thing I want you to know, mm-hmm. that Jesus is the way. Yeah. Second verse says, I know that you've got mountains. That you think you cannot climb. Yeah. I know your skies look so dark. Yeah. That you think the sun would never shine. Yeah. But in case you don't know it. What you say? I tell you God's word is true. Yeah. Everything that he promised. I know that he will do it for you. Yeah. Then he closes out the chorus by saying this. Jesus is the answer. Yeah. For the world today. Yeah. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Yes, so blessed believers and favored bold of God. The day that Jesus Christ boarded a prepared donkey and came into Jerusalem was the Lord's doing. Um, it was marvelous in His eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made and we shall rejoice Hallelujah. and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Let all of us shout Hosanna! Hosanna! Thank you, Hosanna! Hallelujah. But Jesus
And we leave you with this information, information and instruction. Thank you, Jesus. When you ask, when you seek, when you knock in His name, yeah. Amen. look up and look out, because here comes Jesus. Yeah, right. And when you beg and, and, and bid and beseech in His name, yeah. look out and look up, because here comes Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. When you call, when you cry, when you catechize in His name, look out and look up, because here comes Jesus. Yeah. When you petition, when you plead, when you pose and when you in His name. Uh, look out and look up. Yeah. Because here comes Jesus. Yeah. Jesus comes as the answer to our prayers all the time. He comes every time. And like the old folks said, He comes on time. Yeah. Look out. Yeah. Look up. Because yeah. here comes Jesus. Yeah. Right. Here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. When you have problems in your life and you call on Him, yeah. look out, look up. Here come. Yeah. Here come. Yeah. Remember what I told you? 